Welcome to the Friday Focus. My name is Dr. O and today we're going to be continuing our series on sleep apnea. Getting to the bottom of how obstructive sleep apnea actually impairs the ability to breathe requires a basic understanding of something known as sleep architecture. That's the various stages of sleep that human beings experience through the course of the night. Generally, we define stages one and two of sleep as light sleep. Stage three, as well as what we call REM sleep, are your deep restorative stages of sleep. Unless, as a human being, you spend a significant amount of the night sleep cycle in stages three and REM, you're not getting the restorative sleep that you need in order to be bright and alert the following day. But therein lies the dilemma. Stage three and REM stage of sleep, in other words, the deep restorative stages of sleep, also result in the relaxation of the muscles in the body. But when those muscles around the airway relax in certain individuals, that can result in a collapse of the airway. What kind of individuals are at particular risk for such airway collapse in deep stages of sleep? Well, obesity is perhaps the most commonly associated condition resulting in sleep apnea. One of the most common findings in obstructive sleep apnea is snoring. And snoring is literally the rapid opening and closing of the airway. If a particular patient's obstructive sleep apnea is the consequence of the relaxation of the muscles around the airway in the deep neck or the upper chest, then the most likely successful for treatment for that condition is by that modality known as CPAP, which stands for continuous positive airway pressure. Now, I'm not gonna get into what CPAP is because that's outside the realm of my orthodontic practice. However, there are other forms of obstructive sleep apnea that are the result of craniofacial defects in which I do have the necessary expertise to provide alternate treatments. To learn more about these treatments, stay tuned for my next video.